It's bloody freezing at the moment and completely the wrong time of year to try reviewing this. A tank. So now this is the Limo 1 and it's the first robot lawnmower to exist or at least to my knowledge that has fixed rotary blades. Hold on a minute, what, what did I just say? Fixed rotary blades. This is Robot Wars. In all seriousness, this was something that intrigued me. And it's one of the key differences in the Limo that sets it apart from everything else that we've tried before. And that's because every other robot lawnmower has had these loose hinged razor blades on a spinning disc style, which admittedly you end up having to replace quite a lot because they blunt rather easy. But I've always thought that that design was there for good reason. If one of those blades hits something solid, it just gives way by rotating ever so slightly before the centrifugal force spins out the razors back out to cut the grass. And it does that because I assume that if it was solid like on this, then a fixed blade would hit something equally solid. It would then flip the entire robot into the air into oblivion, just like Robot Wars. So this decision to include blades, much more like traditional lawnmowers you can see here, was both intriguing and terrifying. But it would seem that that worry was for nothing because not only has it not flipped itself into oblivion, it's performed arguably the best I've ever used before for cutting. And that's absolutely because of this blade design. By using dual fixed blades, you get a much wider and consistent cut within the lines that it follows. But it also aids massively when you've let your garden get a little overgrown because it can handle so much more than the other styles of robots. And naturally, one of the very first things that I just had to test was just how capable the Limo One is at tackling that long grass. So behind me here, I've got a bit of a patch of land I've let go a little bit wild just next to my orchard area. And I'm gonna see how this performs getting through all of this long area. You can see the actual grass height just below me and apparently yeah, some ice as well. Obviously the wrong time of year to be filming this, but it doesn't matter. Now in the app, I've set this as a separate zone so I can choose specific zone only functions for this test. You can set the individual cutting styles per zone. And here I've set the cutting height to five centimeters, which you can do digitally and it will then raise or lower the cutting deck, which actually means if you were doing your entire garden, you can set different lengths to different areas and it will do it all inclusively in one go. I've also set the RPM of the blades to the fastest possible setting and then the speed of the Limo to a slower pace so to give it the best possible chance. So let's get it going and see how well it does. Now the grass is wet as well and I'll come on to talking about the wet grass and why you probably don't really want to use this in the wet shortly. But let's see how well it does. You can see that it absolutely powers through the long weeds and tangled mess without any issue at all. And the brushless motors are spinning at 6,000 RPM at the moment, which is ridiculously powerful. Of course, a slight downside, the Limo has no collection system, so it mulches it all up and it leaves all the cut vegetation on the ground. But I was so impressed with the performance and it came as a bit of a shock. Now, these blades have a bunch of other very, very big positives. One is that they seemingly create a much neater cut on the garden, but then they are very much like high-end lawnmowers, so they do the same job. Another huge benefit, though, is the maintenance. With the razor style, they end up blunting, like I said, very fast after just a handful of cuts. You'll want to change out those blades very quickly. And whilst they aren't generally expensive, it's a really time-consuming thing, having to unscrew six tiny little screws and washers and replace them with very sharp double-sided razors. Often so sharp, you might end up losing more than just your time. Mm. With the Limo blade, it's a lot heavier duty. It's a lot more resilient and to change them, if you ever needed to, it's exactly the same as a traditional mower. Undo the large center bolt and you've swapped in seconds. 
Also, on the subject of maintenance, one of my biggest bugbears about any form of robot, not just lawn mowers, we're talking indoor cleaners as well, is that to run maintenance on them, every single one of them needs to be flipped over onto its back to access the main rotating parts and consumables which runs a risk of damaging either the robot, the top of it, scratching it all up, or damaging yourself, because this thing is a heavy boy. With the Lima, however, there's an amazing maintenance mode to make access to the blades much, much easier. Holding down the plus icon on the top of the robot itself actually lifts the entire front end up into a vertical stance, revealing all of the mower's moving parts for maintenance and for cleaning. This is such a clever bit of design and a real positive for anyone who wants just ease of use. Also, as a side note here, when it's like this, it can't be driven and the blades can't be used. So if you were planning on using the Limo as part of your plan to accidentally on purpose murder a spouse or loved one for their life insurance, by turning on the blades and pushing them into the maw of the beast whilst they're cleaning the cutting deck, I'd probably look for a better alternative option. Hmm. But it's not all roses and cherries about this design. Whilst having some incredible benefits, it does have a few downsides. One is that they are a lot noisier than the razor blade design. But that's for obvious reasons. It's much more like a traditional lawnmower, which are noisier. And with the Limo 1, it's not just got one lawnmower blade, it's got two, so don't expect it to be a silent butler in the background. It's going to mow your lawn, and you're going to know it's doing it. But another point is that the blades are heavier, and there's a lot more resistance that they face, and given that the entire blade is essentially in contact with resistance all of the time, rather than just those outermost razor parts of the razor design. This, I think, means that the battery life might not quite be as good as it could be in more simple robots with the razor style cutting disc but with an asterisk because with that said it's not that the battery life is bad it's a lifepo 4 battery and with a large enough capacity that it can mow over half an acre on a single charge which is something like 2000 square meters which is far more than 90% of the gardens here in the UK. But it's also got fast charging as well to boot with the 10 amp fast charger on its dock. Supposedly, it can do 1.73 acres in a day as a combination of its battery and its fast charging capabilities, which again is a massive amount of ground, although I've not yet got my hands on a country mansion, so I can't verify that claim exactly, otherwise I'd have to mow the garden about 16 times in a day. But what I can say is that the design of the battery is great because it's completely removable and quite easy to do. So you could, in theory, if you needed to, and if Limo do decide to sell individual batteries, you could have a hot swappable two battery system so you can quickly switch between those batteries. But moving back to the blades, if we were to weigh up those two small downsides against all of the positives that this mowing system has, I'd quite comfortably say that I'm more than happy with having to put up with those two small downsides in favor of all the positives because the performance has been exceptional. I'd almost say that it's performed the best cutting that I've ever tried, only from that cutting perspective, but leaving the lawn looking fantastic. Even if I'm trying to mow during the wettest time of year, it's still done a great job. And actually, that's a point. Because it has a traditional cutting deck, it's much more susceptible to kind of getting clogged with very wet grass. So my advice to you is, if you've got one of these, aim to use it when the grass is more dry and try and take less off your grass each time. Obviously, I've sent this through some particularly long grass to see how well it will do, and that does clog it up. But if I was keeping on top of things, taking small bits at a time, this will perform excellently. And during the summer, I think you'd be able to take it through long grass and it would never clog 
ever. But its cutting isn't the only thing that has impressed me. Its overall design is just done really well. It's a stubby little thing with lots of little well thought out design bits such as a little status screen on top, headlights to make it mow in the dark, which I'll come back to shortly. It's got handles to help you lift it if you need to, but the real cream of the crop and the cream of the features are these tank tracks. These make a bloody incredible amount of difference to its movement ability and are objectively so much better than the wheels that you find on other brands' devices. It'll probably depend slightly on your use case, how much you'll benefit from these tank tracks, but for me, with all sorts of odd bits in the garden, dormant ant mounds, steep inclines, and all manner of other rivets and divots caused by years of neglect from the previous owner, these do make a hell of a difference. Other mowers that I've tried get stuck in one particular section over in the other side of the garden, which has been churned up last winter from a digger installing all the cables for the solar paneling. But although it's not too visible, the wheels still get stuck in the little undulations. When it's wet, the wheels can't get out and the robot gets stuck. This, however, like a tank, just powers through almost anything you throw at it. Now, supposedly, these tank tracks can help it climb angles up to 45 degrees, which is really steep. And this is the steepest hill on my property, and it's measuring in at around 32 degrees-ish, which is really steep. But actually, I didn't realize how steep 45 degree was. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive it up this hill and see how well it does. Now, just as some kind of bit of a, give it a bit of a scapegoat, the ground is really wet and it is cold and very frosty. I have no idea how this is gonna perform. If it doesn't perform well, it's gonna end up in that river and I'm gonna lose it, which wouldn't be ideal, but, Let's give this a go. I'm going to drive it up manually rather than telling it to go up here because there's obviously no grass to mow. So without further ado, let's see what this does. My word! Good grief, look at that! I actually didn't expect that to do quite as well. That just shows how good those tank tracks are. Good grief! I don't know what to do now. I didn't expect that to work. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, this was another test. I very well thought that it would fail at, but it didn't. It just marches up it as if it was absolutely nothing. And that's mad, considering that it's going up a slope that's saturated with water, slippy as hell, and has half a ton of detritus, like dead leaves and twigs all over it. But it just goes to show the full capabilities of the Limo 1 and really shows off why I think that tank tracks like this make a massive difference to the overall functionality of a robot lawnmower. In fact, I wish every single brand would do away with the wheels and just use these. It's also got these omnidirectional wheels here, which have wheels that spin that way, but then wheels on it that spin that way so it can position what a fun bit of engineering that is. Imagine if cars had those. Hmm. Now, to get around your garden, it uses five ultrasonic sensors in various places around the body and AI vision with the camera on the front for obstacle avoidance. And it also uses an RTK for positioning with a satellite so it can never get lost. Now, this has some downsides and some positives. The downside of the RTK is that it's another thing. You've got a power alongside the base station. That and to connect to a sat signal, it needs to be out in the open somewhere away from the house. It can either be connected directly to the base station, like I have, or you can actually connect it to a power outlet directly and even mount it to the roof of your house, which kind of makes a bit more sense a lot easier to connect to the satellite but it is something that you need for this to work and get the robot going which is a little bit of a faff to do because the way the rtk requires you to set the robot up you essentially train the limo one where the boundary of your garden is and then from then on you can change the settings such as cutting patterns angles cutting heights now if the rtk gets moved by a child thinking it's playtime with Gandalf's staff. 
sounded bad, didn't it? But then the whole system fails and falls out of whack. And you have to train the thing all over again, tracing it right the way around your garden, which is perhaps my least favourite thing to do with the whole system. Because to trace the garden, you have to do it using the phone app and using the screen joysticks on the phone connected via Bluetooth is just a bit of a janky experience. It's not smooth or joyful. In the wise words of Marie Kondo, it doesn't spark joy. But for that negative, it's got some very obvious positives in that the RTK and satellite positioning allow it to work in pretty much the darkness. So you could set this to be working first thing in the morning. Although I don't think the neighbours would be too happy about that. But ultimately it gives more flexibility about what time you want to run the mower. And in the UK when the sun starts going down, the winter goes down about four o'clock, you still might want to send it off. Now, vision-only models struggle at night, as you can imagine, because their ability to recognise where they are or recognise objects is only limited to how good the cameras actually are at night, which often aren't very good. And you don't get that with the combination RTK V-SLAM navigation like on this. And I love that they've built this in, this combination to make up for the shortfall in RTK signal. If, for example, the robot ends up under a canopy of trees, or if the weather's particularly bad, or if the satellite isn't positioned overhead correctly, then the robot can flick to just using the sensors and camera and AI vision, which is a great touch to make sure that you've got no data whilst using this robot but overall this has been a real pleasure to use okay it doesn't do everything that i want it's got no ability to stream edges for example of course it will mow to the edges of the grass providing it's up against the same height surface but if you meet a physical boundary like a wall there will be a thin line of long grass due to the safety feature of the blades not being exposed to chop your legs off so you'll still need to trim the edge of your garden once every so often and it doesn't collect any of the grass cuttings or detritus like the mamotion yucca for example it only mulches it and it has no utility beyond being a mower. It can't tow me around in the garden like the Yarbo can, for example. But regardless of it not doing absolutely everything I want, which is highly unlikely because no product will ever meet my lofty expectations, but it's been a really comprehensive experience that has performed above and beyond what I expected of it. To the point that, dare I say it, it might actually be my favourite robot so far. Full stop. And that's partly aided by the price, because it can do all of these things at an RRP that I think is really reasonable. The RRP of the Limo one, which you probably should ignore completely, because it was actually significantly less than this when I filmed this review, but the RRP is £2,999. But my advice is to check the link in the description or scan the QR code here, there, if you're watching on TV, but check that for the most up-to-date price because when I looked, the discount was actually four figures, which was an incredible amount off. I mean, the discount is probably because I'm featuring this in the middle of winter, and I'm right near Black Friday. But if you did want to get any robot lawnmower, for that matter, now is probably the cheapest point you'll be able to get one, which is a little money-saving tip there. Buy summer items in winter and buy winter items in the summer. Martin Lewis? eat your heart out. But even if I was to be critical about its RRP, it's still a damn sight cheaper than the Yarbo. With amazing tank tracks for movement and the first robot lawnmower to actually have a lawnmower on it, which is a very funny thing to say. And without a doubt, when it comes to the spring, this will be finding a permanent place on my lawn because I just love this thing. It's so cool.